in Cape Town, we see that there's been lots of labeling um, between different, uh, you know, parts of, of, for example, you have the Sunnis, the Salafi, and the Shia. Um, as as one thing, what is the path to unity in terms of in terms of those major groups? And then also, in, in the next subsequent question, within the Ahlul Sufiya themselves within the Cape, you get different turuq, Naqshmani, Shavli, Ba'alawi, Qadri, uh, uh, etc. Um, what is about the unity there? Because I know that what one of the things Sheikh speaks about is a lot is about Tariqa Muhammadiyah. Just expound on that uh, for us. Okay, so one, two, three points. Yeah, First point is this, that um, we probably have to drop the names mm -hmm. and accept each one as a Muslim. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be the recommendation of our mother, Baal Aqeeda, Matbashayar. Ashari said that the Muslim you have to accept the person as a Muslim if he's salah with you and he fasts with you. Mm -hmm. If a man comes into the mosque, he stands next to you and performs salah with you, you have to accept him as a Muslim. Don't ask him anything and talk to him, let there be no words. Aqeedah, must understand, you must try and understand. That scholarly matters must be discussed amongst the scholars. Mm -hmm. So she made a lecture the last time about Amr al and the Munkar. One of the very important things and things which will destroy the community is if these topics and these subjects we we're talking about right now, yeah, yeah. becomes the business of everybody. Mm -hmm. They are not qualified, they can't do it, they don't have the insight. There's no, there's no clear distinction between fact and opinion. There's no, there's, they haven't gone through years of training in Montech and logic to distinguish between the evidence and the conclusions. Yes. Because we are not allowed to have khilaf which leads to khusum or feeling that I don't like you. You argue, now ah, you're wrong and you argue back, no, I'm right and you're wrong. And it creates a feeling of ill feeling that the truth of that is haram. That's called ikhtilaf tadad as opposed to ikhtilaf ta'addud. The two types of defense of opinion recognized by most nowadays. If the left I would just like saying, yeah, Imam Malik says you can do this, and Abu Hanifa said you can't do that, and uh, Shafi said you, do, you, can't do, you can't do that. Quiet. No feelings. Total acceptance of diversity in defense of opinion. If that can be restored, we don't have a problem. But unfortunately, we're not doing that way. People are going to the other direction of aggression and feeling and hate and dislike. Which in my view, if I have to pass a judgment all over this, haram. You can't fight with another Muslim, which eventually leads to disliking the person or walking out of the house and that is fact childish. So, point number one, the labels must be dropped. Point number two, we have to accept al Qibla as Muslim and deal at an average level, me and the ordinary people in the mosques, we deal with each other because you make us Allah. That's un non negotiable. You must make us Allah. Or you fast with me. Or they go to Hajj with us. You know, he does stuff with us, which is quite clearly an indication is Iman. They accept the particular deed. That is our, our mother, by the way. Ashaira. That man, Ahl Qibla, is a Muslim. You don't ask him if he's a Shia. You don't ask him if he's a Salafi. You don't ask him if he's a Shafi. You don't ask him if he's this. That is human. And you don't need to categorize and to label people. They seem to be a need to do that. As if it buttresses yourself, or you become stronger, or, we, or whatever the case might be, people want to want to label things. But if we were totally serious, in order to overcome all these differences, we have number one, accept al qibla as Muslim. Mm -hmm. Number two, drop the labels. Mm -hmm. And number three, reject khilaf, ikhtilaf, tadad. From the word Arab we did, the diya, adversarial. Yes. Um, we argue, it becomes acrimonious, and we dislike each other. And Hard feelings develop, and I don't want to look at you the next time I look at you. I see you. Mm. I walk out of the house. This, you're not supposed to do that. The deen does not belong to you. It comes from the Prophet. It's in the Quran and the Sunnah. We are supposed to adopt an attitude of total objectivity. As long as you play with the rules. And the rules have been laid out quite clearly in the books of Usul al -Bit. There are rules. It's not like it's a dead thing which is interpreting Islam now for the first time. Yes. There's nonsense, it's so unbelievable nonsense going on in the media. Uh, the rules of how we interpret the Quran and the Sunnah has been laid down clearly and agreed upon in general by the big scholars of Islam. And, uh, and we need to adopt that particular thing. We need to adopt and say, 
I am not going to talk about my religious views as if it is the truth itself. But mm. yet must be stopped. You must stop thinking your opinion is is a, is, is a given. You must stop being dogmatic. That's called dogmatism. Mm. You can't distinguish between fact, objective, agreed upon fact, and what my opinions are. That's a skill I think we have people lacking. Yeah. In the result, we'll find people of very, uh, I'm sorry, and this might be offensive, mm -hmm. but people of a lower level of education, they, they can't make this kind of decisions. That's one of the beauties, in fact, which I fully agree with and we accept, is that I have a matriculation in mathematics. Even if you don't fully understand what you're doing. Yeah. But what's actually happening is you are developing capacity to argue and to weigh evidence and to yes. not be extreme and emotional. That's it, that's, that's very important. And then we need to be embrace each other. My view is, as the Prophet said, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at the forms of people, but He looks at the hearts. We need to place ahead of everything else matters of the heart and not matters of the body. Hmm. Our focus, what we see as important as, and this is basically, by the way, historically true. What we saw as a Ummah as important was spiritual development and not outer development. Mm -hmm. Okay, nowadays we need outer development. We need to develop our economy and that sort of thing. So we need to find our balance again. Yeah. But in that atmosphere of spirituality above everything, because the Prophet himself said, Allah looked at your heart and not at your actions. True, it's hadith. Layanduru illa suwarikum. Suwarikum. Look at your forms. Look at what's in the heart. Another rewind niyatikum and your niyat as well. So that has to be the change in the mentality. People need to come back to the ilm of the soul. Not the propaganda of the soul. The ilm. The dalil, the proof. What is clearly our spiritual path. It is so clear and so wonderful and so beautiful. You only will open yourself up. It's been written there, it's given to you. You don't even reinvent it. It's given in tons and tons of books. You just need to study it, go by the Mashaykh of Naql, yes. and not start your own school of thought because you think like this and you, in, you were in prison or you had home and you were revealed to stuff. Yes. Now you have to see what has been transmitted to us. Yes. The basic understanding, the rules, the spiritual principles, what is Islamic spirituality as it has come down to us in the sense that that's some of the points I think would contribute to a unification of the Ummah and maybe resolve this whole issue of Wahhabi, Salafi. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a name. Yeah. Yeah.